Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Sword of the Stars 2. This is episode 3. So, last time we spent the whole time in the design screen looking at weapons and armor and getting all excited about these awesome ships that we we're gonna fly later on, but um, unfortunately that's not for a while. We've got to actually build an empire and an economy and all that stuff. So let's get around to doing that. Um, we start off with three systems. We've got Psyus, Pyrus, and Kithrip. So, um, it's actually a pretty crappy start. Um, okay, let's look at each of these systems. So, what you'll notice says there are different planets in each one. Um, here's my capital. Uh, here's the important stuff you need to know. Size, bigger is better. Resources, bigger is better. Biosphere, less important. It has to do with psionics. The more biosphere you have, the bigger this number will be, which means you can use more Psi. But other than that, it's not very useful. Um, your population uh, is, uh, you have Imperial and civilian population. Um, over time, this will grow to reach the maximum level. Um, and the combination of population and the resources and infrastructure, which like population will grow until it reaches the maximum, is what gives is what determines how productive a planet is. And by productive, I mean, what's its industrial output? Industrial output directly translates into how much ship stuff you can build in a turn. And yes, that's essentially it. Uh, there are other things you can do, you can devote planets to trade, um, which we'll get into later on. That's a way to generate more money, of course. Um, if you do that, you sacrifice some ship construction. So roughly speaking, a large planet with low resources, so large gives you high population, is good for trade. Whereas any type of planet with high resources is good for ship production. Um, so 5,000 is pretty average. So let's look here. Pyrus, size five, okay, and high resources. So this system is gonna be very good at producing uh, ships. Notice it has half the population of our capital, but can still produce the, basically the same amount of ship. I use ship as like a, like water, in the sense that you don't pluralize waters. So I'm kind of like dividing all the ships into like one continuous amount of ship. But anyways, you get what I mean. Okay, and actually we have another planet here, which has, which is even bigger and also has great resources. So we're doing uh, very well in terms of uh, uh, industrial output for, for building ships, so that's good. Unfortunately, the other planets, which are not colonized, are uncolonizable because the climate hazard is too high. In other words, it's too unfriendly. It's so unfriendly we can't even terraform it yet. Even if we could, I mean, they're not terribly appealing planets, but still, this one doesn't even have another planet. And our home world, yeah, again, too unfriendly. So that means we're not gonna be doing any colonizing anytime soon, which is unfortunate, but hey, we'll get to it eventually. So let's look at neighboring planets, neighboring systems. So here we have Yith. Um, now we haven't been to Yith yet, so we don't know, but we can vaguely see there's one orbiting body, but it's an asteroid belt. This icon here means asteroid belt. So there's nothing here. So that's not good. Let's look at Flinx. Okay, Flinx has four bodies. So we can hope that some of these are gonna be uh, habitable. Let's look at Gotham. Gotham has one, okay. Uh, I'm looking in terms of proximity, Shigai, not much. Um, Thundara, okay. So actually, if I just hover over, I can I can see a lot of these systems are pretty empty. 
and or empty. Okay, so a lot of empty systems around here. Now, of course, right, I'm at the bottom and everybody else is in this sort of center course. So I'm gonna meet them fast. So there's not a lot of prime real estate here to grab. Um, but we gotta grab it, so let's look at our fleets. Every system has reserve, which is just the ships that are not in a fleet, but that are the sh but that are parked in in that system. Hybrids start with many more fleets than the other races, maybe because they have to gate places because to make up for their their slow start. So let's look at what we start with. We start with the survey fleet, which has command, couple supply, and a couple of fighting ships. We have a colonization fleet which has some colonizers. We've got a construction fleet, which has a constructor to build stations. And we've got a couple gate fleets, which have gate ships in them. So here's what I'm gonna do. We don't need to survey anything yet because we need to get there first and so we need to set up a gate first. So our first priority is to gate to these neighboring systems. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my gate fleet. I'm gonna do the first one I did I'm gonna do in this screen and then I'm gonna show you another way to do it. So I'm gonna get rid of these supply ships. So I'm I'm mouse scrolling up and I'm dragging them into reserve. By the way I'm playing this on uh, a 1280 by 720 resolution just so I can record directly in that resolution and upload it in one shot to YouTube to give you guys 720p. Um, and because it's a reasonable resolution to play at, um, obviously I could play this in like a, you know, 1920 by 1080 or whatever. Um, but then it'd be harder for on my computer, both in terms of rendering, but mainly in terms of uh, the screen capture and everything. So um, that's why I'm a little short on screen real estate here, but uh, it's okay, it's still manageable. And we don't need two gate ships to set up a gate, we only need one, so I'm going to drag it to the, uh, actually I'll put on the survey fleet, uh, you'll see why in a moment. Notice that when I hover over here, not only does that loud sound come, but you get a little uh, uh, overview of, of that particular ship. Okay. Now, this fleet now has two ships in it, the command, which is necessary, and the gate ship. It has eight endurance. Can it make it here to set up a gate? Now, why would I wanna go here? It's a useless, right, empty system. Well, it's gonna help me expand my gate network. Honestly, there's no other reason for it. When later I wanna explore this system, I'll be able to start my expedition from here instead of having to start it from all the way back there is essentially why I'm doing this. So, right click on a system, the mission menu pops up. I want to gate there. I have three sh uh, fleets that can gate. The survey fleet, because I put a gate ship in it. First gate, which is pretty full, and the second gate. Now, notice that without any supply, I can still make it with these crummy old ships. So I'm gonna do this. First, I just wanna note, the actual gating doesn't take any time. It's just gonna take us seven turns to get there. One turn to zip back, confirm and exit. So this fleet has been assigned to go there. Now the reason I'm doing this, I'm, I'm splitting this up is, I start with four gate ships total, I'm gonna effectively have four gate fleets to get started quickly. Um, I'm gonna do the same thing with the uh, first gate fleet, but I'm gonna do the rest of this in the fleet manager, which is this icon over here, just cause it'll be a bit more effective. Okay, so first gate fleet, supply, gate ship, I'm gonna put this in the colonizing fleet. Now, we're fortunate, or I should say unfortunate, that in that we can't colonize any of our starting systems because they're so inhospitable, which means I can use this colonizing fleet, or more importantly, its command ship, to do something useful like go gate neighboring systems. Um, so we'll make a, 
make do with what we have. Okay, supply. Now, um, I'm gonna actually use my construction fleet to start building a station uh, very soon, although it won't need its supply. So I'm gonna take this out here. Um, what's the, the reason I'm sticking all these guys in reserve is that they cost less to maintain when they're in reserve. So I'm saving a bit of money uh, every turn because of that. Now, I may need to reassign supply ships to these if their targets are far away. By the way, if you wanted to create a fleet, you would have to have a free command ship, which I don't have, and you have to have a free admiral. And these admirals have traits. Um, for now, the only thing I'll point out is that Pathfinder is good for survey missions, architect for construction, and green thumb, as well as um, good shepherd are good for colonizing. It's not the end of the world here. Notice my second gate fleet is green thumb. Whatever, it's not gonna hurt the gating. Um, so those are the only traits I'll highlight for now. Anyways, we're done here. Once you create your fleet, you can organize the default layout of the ships. Uh, we don't need to worry about that yet, so we're done here. Okay, now once my gauge fleet gets there, it's gonna come back, and then the first thing I'm gonna wanna do is I'm gonna wanna survey it. Now I'm gonna wanna use my survey fleet for that. So I should set my closest destination to be the survey fleet, which is actually this one here. So I'm gonna cancel this. Yes. We're, we're gonna actually. I will abandon the mission. We're gonna actually gate this with the survey fleet. Confirm. Now, can I? No, they've added, uh, uh, oh, I did cancel. Let's, I think because I already confirmed it will stay. They've recently changed the user interface there. Okay, it's good. So in eight turns, I'll have my survey fleet back, by which I mean I'll have the Pathfinder Admiral back so I could send him on a mission soon. Um, let's, this here looks like the next closest one. So let's send the colonizer guy out from an exit. Notice the game automatically realized that it would be quicker to gate here and then slow boat it there. Okay, next looks like we'll go to Gotham. See, I can't make it. No fleets can make it this far. So let's give them some supply. open this up okay is one supply enough yes it is okay and finally yeah let's go here can't make it go that should be enough okay so notice if we had a gate here you could have just jumped right there so in respect you might be asking well why are we even bothering to get this guy well asteroids can be mined you know it's not gonna hurt us also Having more gates increases the gate capacity of our network, which is this number here. And later on, when we have large fleets, that's, we're gonna really want that. Okay, fleets are assigned, except for the construction fleet. Let's go ahead and put it to work. Build station, assign station. Normally, you don't need to place it in a specific spot. You just confirm an exit, but I'm gonna show you this screen anyways. If you want to, you can choose a specific spot in your solar system where you want it to be placed. So on this planet, I already have, this is what you start with. I already have a gate station and a naval station. Um, 
I could place the sign station in these two, one of these two spots, or there's another planet here, but I can't build anything around it because it's not colonized yet. There's a tech that I can develop that will allow me to do that. So anyways, I'm gonna drag this over here, click, commit. So the, the different stations you can build are sign stations, which help with research, yeah, no surprise thing. there. We build to last. You can build civilian stations, which help with trade. Naval stations, which are uh, military and logistics. Um, diplomatic stations, which help with diplomacy. Um, the Hivers can build gate stations. Um, the Zul have a special station called the Tribute Station. Um, the Hiver Gate Station is like, um, it's a mini, it's got a bit of a military capability. Um, it help, it can help you with the um, lab research for your gate technology only. It has a little morale boost effect. Mostly, it's there to help with your um, gate network infrastructure and for something called far casting. Um, once you develop the technologies, you can uh, jump a certain amount of light years from a system with a gate towards a system without a gate, which drastically reduces the time it needs to expand your empire. And having gate station in the originating system uh, will help your accuracy when you jump. Um, okay, so I was here because when you build your stations, you can add on modules. And as you add on modules, you can upgrade the station and make it bigger and better. So the modules I'm going to add for now Let's go through them. So Bastion is hit points. This is guns. Dock is reduced support costs. So it's costing me this much per turn. So I do want to invest in this. I'm not going to do it right away, but I will do it very soon. Amp is uh, gate capacity. This is some um, morale boost technology. And this is uh, scanners. Um, which helps with the uh, both the accuracy of the jumps that I was just talking about and just uh, detecting enemies as they come. My naval base has guns. Command means that that system can support more fleets. Um, this is important because you can't just have like a thousand fleets orbiting a new colony that you just put down, the colony can't support that many. You need to have a naval base or a very large colony in order to support a very large fleet. So that's one of the reasons naval stations are important. Docks um, increase the shipbuilding efficiency in the system. So good to have those in systems that are gonna be building a lot of ships. Repair, obviously to repair your ships. Sensors, military, you know, sensors just detecting ships incoming and warehouse increases, I'm sorry, I, what I said earlier about command applies to warehouse. Warehouse is how uh, much of a fleet you can support. Command is how big the fleet that defends the system can be. And that includes, um, that's like not the actual fleet that's parked there, but that means stuff like uh, static defenses, like uh, defense satellites and things like that. So the only thing we want to build up now is the dock because that'll make ships that I build cheaper. Um, on all three of these, I want to increase the docks also. Remember docks do something different for them, but I don't want to bankrupt myself right at the beginning. So I'm just gonna uh, do this gradually over a few turns. Okay. We are almost ready to end our first turn. We have not looked at any of these buttons yet. We won't for a while yet. The last thing we're going to do is we're actually going to 
Um, you know, let's keep it simple. Let's just build a second construction ship here. We're gonna keep it in the same fleet. It's just gonna help us build things faster. So these are all the designs that I have. Constructor, constructors are cheap, but they take a long time to build. Submit order. Construction order placed, Majesty. In fact, because this is so cheap, I'm going to be able to afford to upgrade these stations a bit right away. And at last, we will end our first turn. Three to one, if you go, oh shit, you can still cancel uh, before the end of the turn. Okay, and now let us see with the recording going on, how long it'll take to process the end turn. Uh, you can't uh, really do anything uh, while it's processing. You can't really interact with the screen to do anything, which is unfortunate, but uh, that's life. Um, these other buttons here, this one here is for diplomacy. We won't get to that for a while. This here is uh, the colony list. You saw me use this one. This is to list the stations, very useful. Colony list, not so useful yet. I'm still hoping they'll make some UI improvements to it. Um, what it really needs to be is a tool where you can go through all the uncolonized planets and sort them to decide where to send your next colony mission to, but it's not really useful for that. This is taking a lot a longer. Station. The science is activated, my queen. Yes. Okay, are you done talking? Good. Okay, so, um, yes, yes, okay. Um, that in turn took a lot longer. Um, uh, I'm reluctant to edit this out because it's going to be a pain. I might use the YouTube editor. Um, we'll see. Maybe it's because I'm recording and uploading and all that stuff. Well, anyways. That's unfortunately. At the end of the turn, you can see what has happened here. So our survey fleet. Oh, these are kind of bogus messages. They're gonna fix that in, a, in an upcoming patch. They, they're saying that the fleet casted even though it just actually used the gate network. Notice that even though we made money, we had the initial 100,000 and we lost some because of the upgrades to the stations that we were doing. So that's why I didn't wanna spend all our money at once because then we'd be deep in the red. Okay, I'm gonna stop the recording here and we'll see you soon uh, for the next episode.